one that you can she works both in the NHS as well as in the private andrology clinic at Harley Street. As it has been spoken, erectile dysfunction is a very common issue and uh, the incidence is increasing with the age. Having said that, at age 40, about 40% 40 of the men may have erectile dysfunction, more or less severe, and 70% will report having erectile dysfunction by the age of 7. So there are a lot of common erectile dysfunction treatments and various contemporary management guidelines. However, as Dr. Carter said about PRP and stem cell, uh, therapy in regards to the common guidelines of European Association of Urology or American Association of Urology, botulinum toxin is not included into the standard management of erectile dysfunction. However, uh, in European Association of Urology guidelines, it's mentioned under innovative treatment modalities and some of the most known studies of botulinum neurotoxin usage in erectile dysfunction patients, uh, they are mentioned too. So, as we know, botulinum toxin A is produced by anaerobic bacteria, Clostridium botulinum, and there are eight distinct serotypes from A to G, uh, A, B, C, E, F, and G, uh, that are susceptible to human nervous system and there is one D serotype which doesn't have clinical relevance. Serotype A, botulinum toxin A, is most commonly used in the clinical practice and several commercial formulations exist, the Borgex produced by Allergon being the most widely used in both aesthetics and also other non-aesthetic functional um, clinical approaches. So, botulinum toxin A first was used in 1977 in the treatment of strabismus in children and since then more and more um, clinical usages have been adapted and now it's being widely used for various functional treatments as well as obviously aesthetic treatments. So the critical process in penile erection activity is the relaxation of the intracavernosal smooth muscle. And in regards to the logic behind botulinum toxin usage in erectile dysfunction, we have to go back to the general pathophysiology of erectile function. So paraventricular and medial preoptic nuclei of hypothalamus control this process of erectile function. Signals travel through a parasympathetic nervous system uh, to the nerves of a S, from S2 to S4, sacral plexus, and then we travel to the penis via cavernosal nerves. And nitric oxide is being released by those cavernosal nerve terminals that it all initiates the erectile process, while nitric oxide from endothelial cells act to maintain the process. So the mentioned nitric oxide stimulates the production of SGMP that further on um, activates protein kinase G that opens potassium channels and closes calcium channels and that reduces intracellular concentration of calcium relaxes intracavernosal smooth muscle tissue within penal shaft and in that case, arterial flow is being increased on the mechanical basis, while simultaneously venal occlusive activity appears. So that's the whole logic behind botulinum toxin usage, because botulinum toxin usage may, uh, may relax smooth muscle tissue, as well as, uh, as, well as lead to and increase arterial flow towards erectile function, uh, towards erectile tissue, and enhance erectile function in the man. Botulinum toxin formulations are mainly known as free: onabotulinum toxin A, abobotulinum toxin A, and impobotulinum toxin A. These are commercially available products. 
And as I told, the vast majority of our studies in regards to erectile function treatment were botulinum toxin based on uh, the mentioned onabotulinum toxin A and mainly the Bojax produced by Allerga. So as you might have known, all these different um, types of toxin, they may also differ uh, in their characteristics, especially also how we are uh, diluting the toxin. There are different units per valve uh, system, and also uh, some of them, they have to be stored different. So it's very important. Uh, another important, uh, important thing to mention is that Botox doesn't come as a pure substance. It does also have excipients such as, depending on the brand, lactose, sucrose, gelatin, dextran, or serum albumin, buffer systems. So that's very important to know in regard to some possible allergic reactions. In general, botulinum toxin has light and heavy chains and also on toxic accessory proteins, which is common to all the uh, botulinum neurotoxin formulation. The following illustrates how muscle contractions occur and then how Botox Cosmetic helps to temporarily reduce the muscle contractions that cause facial lines to appear. Neurons send signals to the muscle cells, causing them to contract and produce movement. Over time, repetitive muscle movements may cause facial lines to form. The presynaptic neuromuscular motor nerve ending contains vesicles prepared to release the neurotransmitter acetylcholine. When neuronal stimulation occurs, the vesicle fuses with the nerve membrane. This process is facilitated by interaction between proteins on the vesicle and the cell surface, forming the snare complex. Binding of the vesicle to the membrane triggers acetylcholine release which results in muscular contraction. This is the normal function of muscular contraction prior to Botox cosmetic injection. Now, let's review the Botox cosmetic mechanism of action. The Botox cosmetic complex includes the 150 kilodalton core molecule surrounded by its protective accessory proteins. This is the 150 kilodalton core molecule. The Botox cosmetic core molecule is comprised of a 100 kilodalton heavy chain and a 50 kilodalton light chain. The heavy chain contains the binding domain that allows it to interact with the receptor of the nerve terminal. Therefore, it is able to enter the cell through the process of endocytosis. The toxin, which is now contained within a vesicle inside the cell, releases the 50 kilodalton light chain into the cytoplasm. Once in the cytoplasm, the light chain is available to cleave SNAP25, one of the snare proteins involved in the formation of the snare complex. This prevents the release of acetylcholine. When acetylcholine cannot be released, muscle contraction cannot occur. In this uh, nice visual, which is royalty-free and widely accept uh, accessible as educational one by Allergon, uh, even though you know it's uh, for antiwrinkle treatment in the face, this general concept uh, can be uh, adjusted to any kind of treatment of botulinum toxin in regards to the mechanism in the nutshell, then we talk about botulinum toxin on the muscle relaxation. Uh, during this uh, active period it is of the action, it is believed that normal muscle innervation and function are still restored because afterwards, three or six months, once uh, that uh, that uh, effect of a Botox diminishes, axonal sprouting starts, and that's exactly why Botox is a reversible treatment. Because axonal sprouting, then it restarts, uh, then we regain the muscle stability to contract again. So generally speaking, 
Then we talk about the erectile dysfunction treatment with botulinum toxin. It's also lasting for about three to six months, and afterwards it needs to stop up. In regards to our contraindications, you may find it in the leaflet. Uh, obviously, allergic reactions to previous uh, treatment. As I said, it's very important not to forget some other ingredients, excipients. Now, in regards to the botulinum toxin impact on fertility, whether it may be any kind of adverse reaction on to fertility, there are some studies available. And in regards to those available studies, no adverse reactions are noted. It's another important topic, uh, immunogenicity to botulinum toxin treatment. Uh, so sometimes body forms some antibodies to botulinum toxin and either this primary or secondary uh, situation, it may lead to non-responsiveness to botulinum toxin treatment. In regards to dilution, it's all available, it's all standard. And for any kind of treatment, usually the dilution is with 2.5 milliliters of 0.9% of uh, normal saline uh, in, regards to, in regards to the vial. However, as we see here, uh, 100 unit vial is diluted with 2.50 milliliters. However, in regards to those new clinical trials, talking about intracavernosal injection of botulinum toxin, we are usually having a bit different protocol just in order to enhance the concentration of botulinum toxin in one certain area that it wouldn't spread so much and there wouldn't be uh, so much of spread effect of the botulinum toxin to the nearby tissues because we want it to be uh, secluded to erectile, uh, erectile tissue within the penile shaft. So in those cases, usually, uh, it was one milliliter of normal saline, sometimes two milliliters of normal saline, depending on the group, uh, which is being diluted with 100 of units. But generally speaking, uh, the idea is that whatever dilution we are using, maybe we will have more or less dispersed effect, maybe we will have more or less effect, however, the mechanism is the same and the idea is the same. That botulinum toxin, if being injected into erectile tissue, it can act on smooth muscles within the erectile tissue, and in that case, uh, the arterial blood flow is increased to the uh, penile shaft and we have an enhancement of erectile function. There are a couple of more studies, uh, but it's generally speaking the same, just about some different dilutions, just about some different uh, uh, numbers of the vials used. As I said previously, here in the way, uh, botulinum toxin as well as fillers, we have to be used by the consultant or specialist within their field of expertise. So that's mainly the idea, but it's all still under the clinical trials and there are no official guidelines, no standardized treatment in regards to botulinum toxin usage for erectile function enhancement. However, I hope that if more of us would be engaged into this um, scientific uh, guidelines development and if more of us would publish some data if we are using this kind of treatment, it would help to facilitate standardized guidelines more quicker and also it would help us to have botulinum toxin treatment included into the official guidelines such as European Association of Neurology or American Association of Neurology. If you would have any questions, I'm happy to answer that in the end of the session. Thank you.